we go. I'll give you a bit of an intro. Cool. Oh, we've already started. Thanks, Joel. Awesome. Well, welcome to another Mesh Monday Night Call. We're excited about tonight's speaker because she absolutely crushed it at Game Plan with her superhero um, speech. And I must say the host of that panel was phenomenal as well. Um, <laughs> But uh, Lee is just a breath of fresh air. You know, this woman is a solo mama and um, just watching the growth and the inner work that this woman has done over the last three years in this business has been so inspiring and um, she's made shit happen because of the way that she showed up, you know, and I've just seen her create the most amazing experiences for her and her boys and they've just had an amazing trip overseas. Was that last year or the year before? Gosh, time's flying by. Last year. And last, last, last year. Christmas. Yeah. And it's just, yeah, honestly, Chick, I just love your rawness and how you just, um, I don't know, you just you just turn up, your confidence has, has blossomed, and I would just really love you to share part of your journey and then um, whatever tips you've got to help I suppose people um, on the same journey really explode their business, but grow as a person as well. So take it away, my friend. Yeah, cool. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Um, I've got heaps that I can share tonight. So if I get to a point where you want to stop me, then just stop me. <laughs> I don't know how long this is going to go for. Um, so basically, yeah, like I'm a single mum. I have been in the business now for nearly four years, which is crazy. Um, I'm an NMD. Uh, and a little bit about my background is that I've worked in corporate IT for 27 years and I'm also a fully qualified beauty therapist. So I've had my hands in a few little piles of things. Um, but just to take you a little bit back to my actual career working in IT, because it was a very different lifestyle back then. I had no children. I absolutely loved my job. I had so much flexibility to travel around. I had an amazing income. But what I knew back then is that in those jobs that I had, <coughs> I was working really long hours and it was definitely not something that I could do when I had a family. <coughs> I've got a croaky voice tonight. So then I met my husband um, about, when was that? I don't even know how long ago it was. It felt like, feels like forever ago. And we got married really quickly. We had babies, we bought a house, um, but obviously things don't always work out the way that we want them to, right? And I think it was just the pressures of, finances, living on one wage, and me definitely going from such an independent career to, oh my God, I've got children and I'm sitting on my ass doing nothing every day with nothing to work towards, no vision, no people around me really. And I just ended up getting fat. <laughs> I was lazy. I love daytime soapy TV shows like that's the reality that you can sort of fall into living somebody else's dream <laughs> and that was me so um, obviously we separated um, that was about seven years uh, six years ago now I think and I became a single stay-at-home mum on just a single parent pension and it, like those topple effects to go from $100,000 on your own a year down to like $50,000 as a joint income down to $440 a week as a single parent. There was no holidays. There was no shopping. There was no doing any fun stuff that was lighting me up at all. So as much as I loved being a stay-at-home mum, we also used to breed Labradors too. So over four years, we had two kids under the age of four. 45 puppies we had 45 labrador puppies and we moved house eight times over four years in state so you can just imagine my life was a crazy but i was so unhappy i just had no energy and no drive at all 
Um, and I just ended up being an absolute zombie mum. So <laughs> I felt like I was just stuck in this big, massive groundhog day of, oh my God, what am I going to do? <coughs> However, there's always going to be that pivotal moment where you're like, okay, something's got to shift with this. Something's got to change, right? And that one moment where you have to decide that you're more than enough and just really start working on yourself. <coughs> so I just made this big, massive decision that I was going to invest in my own health. I really wanted to get fitter. That was my first number one goal. Get fitter, get healthier, and just get out of this financial situation that I was in living on one income. So over the last four years, this has just been crazy. My biggest thing I love to do is just tick off goals. Like tick off little magic moment goals. So who loves magic moments? Let's kind of make this a little bit fun and interactive tonight. I do. So holidays are one of my all time favorite things to do. Who loves going on holidays? I want you to just think about if you could go anywhere in the world what would you do where would you take the kids it can just be down in new south wales somewhere it can be down on the beach it can be, you know yes thanks joel start sticking some things in the chat <coughs> maldives <coughs> maldives is on one of my lists <coughs> i don't know why i'm so croaky hang on let me have some water probably just yelling at my kids um so th that's one of my all-time favorites and some of the things that I've ticked off as a single mum over the last four years, just because of this business, I went on a four week trip around America and Mexico for four weeks with no kids. It was crazy. It was so awesome. And my kids are seven and nine now. So there was a big move to actually leave them for four weeks. But I tell you what, if you can do it, go and do it. Um, I've got an amazing mum who came and looked after my kids for me for four weeks. I have just taken my kids to Japan on their all time amazing, you know, vision board adventure that we set in and we did Disneyland. <clears throat> As a single mom, I went by myself and tracked around Japan for nine days. I dragged them everywhere. It was so much fun. We, I think we spent 13 hours at Disneyland one day in minus one degrees with two kids under the age of nine. I'm like, come on, we're here for one day. We're going to stay here for 13 hours. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's the moments that you have on those adventures that you've ticked off, that you've dreamed about it in your mind, you've written it down, you've had a plan, and you've just worked little bits at a time to be able to work those goals. And I tell you, my, my all-time best magic moment was watching my son Logan when we were at Disneyland. And it was like nine o'clock at night. They'd done the whole day. And he's, um, he's seven now. And he stood there and waved at the floats going past of all the Toy Story. And just like that look in their eye to go like, that is a really cool magic moment that this, that gives me goosebumps, that this business can give you all of those things. And someone said not long ago, I think it was Adam Westwick, I can't remember who it was that said it, but you know, like who's got kids? Hands up who's got kids. It's actually our job to, you know, when we, when all of our kids have got all these amazing dreams of all the places that they want to go and you've got these dreams too, right? But it's our job to help them go and live that. So yeah, last year was our big epic adventure and snow and Disneyland and all that kind of stuff. This business can really impact so many lives, but it also impacts yours and your families as well. So that was like my number one thing that you that I wanted to work towards in the beginning. Um, but you know, it helps with your mindset, it helps with your emotions, it helps with your finances, and it just helps you be the very best mum that you can be for your kids. So super, super rewarding. Now, I kind of look back and go, all of these worst days of my life, like I've had some bad days, <laughs> you know, you, when I made the decision to leave my husband, when I made the decision to leave the house, when I've made decisions that impacted everything. Some of those days looking back now have been the best days of my life because if I didn't leave my husband, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing today. There's no, no way that I would be doing what I was doing today. 
So who was the game plan? Who saw my speech on stage as Wonder Woman? That was crazy. So that was just a thought that I had in my mind one day. Like one day, how freaking cool would it be to stand on a stage in a Wonder Woman outfit? So this wasn't something that just came up when I got asked to speak on stage. This was actually a goal that I had set at Date With Destiny a year, year and a half ago that I wrote down in a book that I would like to speak on a stage in a Wonder Woman outfit just because it'd be really freaking cool. <laughs> yeah, Joe, I can't really see the chat. Hang on, because I've got too many screens up. Yeah, I actually, um, Joel just said, I thought you'd bailed when I saw the empty chair. We, we talked about that and I actually had a call from my upline, Lorian, going, where are you? Do you know that you're supposed to be on stage right now? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, buddy, it's all good. It's all part of it, right? Like, <laughs> it's all good. And it would have taken away from the other girls' stories if I had have been up there on stage in a Wonder Woman outfit and I wouldn't have been able to sit down in it anyway. So it was all good. It had, had to happen like that. <laughs> So I wanted you to think about like, you're always going to have challenges. You're going to have challenges in your business. You're going to have challenges in your personal life. You're going to have challenges with your health goals, all of those things. But what I see in that is problems are a sign of life. They're not going to go away, but we can create change with the right skills. And when you've got the right mentors in this business, you can always find a solution always, if you reach out and ask for it. So when I think about creating magic moments, no matter how big or small they are, just imagine that you can create all of these magic moments just one step at a time, just one step. So my most favorite way to do this, and this is kind of where the whole superhero yourself thing came in, because that's my thing, superhero, superhero yourself. And it's like, who do you need to become to create those goals to be able to um, like when I first heard it, I wasn't really resonating a lot with the business in the beginning. Like I was, I was smashing it. I like I've reached every promotion. I fast tracked all the way through everything up until NMD, but I feel like I just fluked it in a way. And it wasn't until like Adam started saying to me, like, Lee, like your business isn't going to grow until you grow. And I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? I have no idea what you're talking about, Adam. How on earth do I grow? Because I'd never done personal development ever before I started this business. Little bits at work, but not much. I'd never worked on myself. I didn't have a personal trainer. I'd never done a health program. Um, and th like, there were so many things that I'd just never done before. So... My most favorite thing that I have learned in this whole business is setting goals and creating vision boards. It's just been so much fun. And out of that has become this whole superhero yourself thing. So at an event, um, I think it was about two and a half years ago, it was John Holowaty. And you know, when somebody will just say one thing, that'll just spark something up in your mind and it'll go, ah. Oh, that's a cool idea. Run with it. <laughs> and so I did. When John Holloway said, go and superhero yourself, like I literally went, cool, I'm going to superhero myself and wear a Wonder Woman outfit on stage. Like I can become Wonder Woman. So cool. If you can see, I don't know if you can see, see the cabinet behind me? Oh, it's over this side actually. Like it's just full of Wonder Woman things because like I can visualize strength. I can visualize... Um, the certainty, I can visualize the posture. So when you find all of these things of who you want to become, go and find little tokens that represent that. Put them on your vision board, put them in front of you every day, put words around in front of you every day. So I've kind of got a little bit of a rule when I do training that you guys want to make sure that you're taking some notes. <laughs> Don't come on to training and not take some kind, something away from this because I want you guys to go away and implement it. Tag me in your post if you want to, like, you know, make sure that you're going away with something. So who wants to do a little fun little process that I've kind of learned? It's kind of a little cut down version, but yeah, we'll get the, we'll get the gist. So I've done heaps of personal development over the last four years. And I think it's pretty phenomenal as a single mum that I've even been able to even do all of this stuff. I've done 
um, two UPWs with Tony Robbins. I've done Date with Destiny once. So I, I made the personal investment to pay 10 and a half grand. Um, I think it was a year and a half ago to do the Mastery University program. And I'm dead set, it was the best thing that I have ever done. Lauren Slocum obviously is our upline and she works for Tony Robbins. And I just love, love, love his goal setting process. Linda's also got one, which you guys probably have got somewhere where she breaks it down into a couple of different different steps so that's a really good start but what I find so powerful is doing immersion stuff so in January we're doing a vision board training which is going to be pretty cool at Super Saturday so I really encourage you guys to get on board with all of that um, but before I before I went to Day with Destiny I'd never written out any goals like I had no idea even where to start and when I went to Date With Destiny and got immersed in all of this different process of doing new goals and vision boards and, you know, writing all your values and stuff down, it's something just really ticked for me. And I've just gone on to make it a really fun little process that I also do with my kids too. So you can do this with your kids. Um, and what I wanted to think about was how can I go and create a really cool, fun, extraordinary life that I wanted on my terms? Because my terms are also different to your terms and what your ideal lifestyle is, is totally different to mine. Like the things that I like to do every day, I've got friends who love to go to the beach and go for walks in nature. That is so not me. <laughs> I am totally happy just going to the gym every day and hanging out on a treadmill. <laughs> I don't care about nature walks. So your ideal lifestyle is going to be totally different to mine, right? So I was just reading some of the chat. That was you too. Cool. Um, and, you know, what I wanted to do, um, my business name is called Elite Lifestyle Collective. And the elite came from just living in alignment with my own values being the best version of myself and just having a little goal and a vision to be able to work towards every day that's small, that's achievable. Because I think that we can have all of these great big massive goals, like to go, yeah, I want to be an MD and I want to be a hundred club. And it was so far out of the my brain. <laughs> like I just couldn't fathom how I would even get there. But what was most important for me was how can I make myself feel every day through that whole process? And it was just the little things. So for those of you who did um, the who do you want to become a game plan, who's got their words? Like, do you remember your word? Like, who is it that you want to become? Like, so maybe put your word in the chat because something that was really cool that I had never done before is that we kind of think of all of these I am words and a lot of people put their I am's and you know, I'm this and I'm that, and that's all really cool. But how can you actually work towards doing that was one of the things that went on in my mind. Like how can I be my, uh, on my screensaver, I can put it on here. I write it down. How can I appreciate even more the love and connection in every moment? So, and that's how can I show up the best version of me? How can I be, more of the Wonder Woman that I always known that I could. So my word last year was bold and it was also love. So some of the things that I wrote down and I've got them um, always in front of me here on my little chart here. So I'll give you an example. So you've got your word is who you want to become to reach your goal. My goal last year was love. So I just wrote down four things. Keep it really simple. Just four things that what do you do right now that allows you to already feel like that? So my example was with love. Anytime that I'm spending time with my kids, I feel that I'm sharing love. Anytime that I hug or high five someone, I'm giving love. Any time that I can remind myself that I am my own hero, I'm giving love. And any time I remember the, the love that I have for myself, I'm giving love. So it just took a new level of who did I want to become. So the goals that you set down in the business, this little fun little process that I'll do with you in a second, 
I want you to remember those who do I need to become because it's those little goals. I can actually feel like I'm feeling love every single day. So if you put bold down, what's something that you already do in day-to-day life that's bold? Because it's not, okay, well, I want to be more bold to be able to go and do a live. Well, you already are that. So go and remember all of the things that you're already doing that's making you feel like that. And you will feel more bold when you go to do your lives just by thinking about it. It's a crazy process, but it works. So when I go to write my goals down, I tend to do this every quarter. And I, if I really want to get into a good state, you have to do this in a good state. You have to go and dance around the lounge room, crank on some music, get a good playlist, Go and have some fun, dance on the beach, whatever you want to do. Handstands, cartwheels, worm. (laughs) Follow Christine's step in all of that. Um, But um, obviously immersion events is where you can really go and feel that energy. And if you get a chance to ever go to see Tony Robbins, definitely go or go somewhere like that where you can get that real energy and condensed learning in there. But you can do it with Linda's training as well. And it's great if you can dance around and just get full energy by listening to it on a live. Um, There was one time, I think it was about six months ago, I got all my team together and we just listened to Linda's video and we all did it together. So that's another fun thing to do too. So, um, yeah, he's only got a few more years. Yeah, what's exciting is that Scott Harris is taking over. So that's, that's pretty cool too. Um, so when I broke down all of my ultimate lifestyle of what I wanted, I put on there, not just physical things, but I put little things down, how I wanted to feel, um, like things that I could do with my kids, things that I could create, things that I could have, things that I could build, places that I wanted to go. So like your the list is completely endless, right? Of what you can write down on here. So I'd love for you guys, like eventually write some goals in the chat or do a post about it or do a story. But some of the really cool things that I wrote down and broke this down, you might need to dig a little bit deeper on it. But obviously this is a really a, a long process so you can just keep refining. But you want to think about if you woke up on Christmas morning this year, what is it? 30 days time. So in 30 days, if you woke up on Christmas day, what are all of the things that you would love to have, create, do for other people, financial milestones that you think? So don't think about this just in the next 30 days, but think about this over the next 20 years. So if you had 20 years to create your whole complete ultimate lifestyle, what does that look like for you? Now, if you want some prompting things, Keith Abraham's got on his website, He's got 25 questions to create your list of 100 lifetime dreams. It's a really cool list and it just gives you some prompts. But Linda's training also gives you prompts as well on her thing. So I sat there and in a peak state, you have to do this in a really good state. If you're like um, Eeyore and you're like, yeah, I'm going to write some goals down. Yeah, I want to go to the Maldives. That's not exciting. (laughs) But some of the things that I wrote down that I've actually ticked off and I did it all in a year. So you write down your list of 20, like your 20 year plan and just sit there and like, just write like crazy for like 10, 15, 20 minutes. But then what you want to do is you want to break that down into put little tick, tick lists. So I've got mine here. So here was one of my initial goals lists that I just started writing down a whole load of stuff. But then what you want to do is you want to go and actually put numbers on everything and realistically write down, is this something that I could do in one year, three years, five years or 10 years or 20 years? So you're putting numbers down on everything. But then what you want to do is take the focus away from all of your big goals. So say, for instance, if NMD is on your list, And you know that, you know, maybe that's something that you want to work towards over the next three years. It took me two years and two months of really hard on consistent action to get to NMD in two years, two months. 
So if you're only doing half an hour a day, realistically, are you going to be able to get there in three years? Maybe. I don't know, maybe put it on five year plan, but realistically, what can you, what do you think you can achieve? And then you want to break it down. So you've got the list of all of your number ones. So with your number ones, that's what's going to go on your vision board for this next year. Everything that's on your number one. Yeah. Put down NMD and all that kind of stuff. But I, what I found was I've got on my vision board, which I've got up here, I've got written down NMD, 24 club, 39 club, 50 club and 100 club all on the one vision board. And I look at it now and just go, what did I put all that down on there for? Because that's just not something that I'm really focusing on. And then it gives me an, an emotional connection around, oh, I failed. I didn't get that. <laughs> I didn't get 100 club this year. <laughs> what did I put it on my one year vision board for? But it might be cool to put on like a five year vision board or a 20 year vision board or something like that. So I then got my list of all of the things that I wanted to do in one year. All of the things that I knew that maybe I won't do all of them, but they were totally achievable. So some of those things were at the time when I did my last one um, to reach NMD because I knew that I had a certain time frame that I could get it in. I had six more months to be able to get it before conference the other year, last year. I knew that I could put retreat in Perth down because I knew that if I got NMD that I could go to retreat, wear a Wonder Woman outfit on stage, take my kids to Japan, take them on a plane, get a toned bum. <laughs> that was a good one. It's a good health goal. Get a toned ass. <laughs> Crew date with destiny. Feel amazing. So like I just wrote down all of these little goals. Now, obviously some of your goals are going to be totally different to mine, right? But that was just what was most important to me at that time. And have a house in Broad Beach. That was, that was like my number one. So what I did then, like I had this whole big list then of about 25 different one-year goals. But it's still too much to focus on. If you've got all these things going on, like too many buckets, you can't focus on 25 different goals all in the one time. It'll be like having 50,000 post-it notes sitting in front of you. So what you then want to do is condense that down into four, just four things. Like what can you see on there that are your top four things that you would love to achieve in the next year? And I, from that, I achieved all four, but without even realizing it, I actually achieved 17 because it was just like subconsciously, I was ticking them off. I've got it on my vision board. So I did my vision board based on all of the goals that I wanted to do in a year, but I really broke down why I wanted to have those top four. What benefits was it actually getting for me? to get those just four goals. Um, and what questions did I ask myself? Um, like, why? Why do I, why do I actually want that? Um, what did I have on there? Last year, when I haven't completed mine for this year because I go on the, I go from May to May. So I'm kind of in the middle of a whole year. Um, but one thing actually, it has, it has um, on my vision board here. So this is my, little map that I write down of my written out vision board. Um, mine are uh, to build my website. I had to take the kids to Japan. And one of my top four one year goals this year is to create a vision board and goal setting event. <laughs> so that was really cool. And the day that I actually wrote all of this down, um, I've talked to Lauren Slocum about doing some vision board training and, you know, like just what is the next step that you need to do to work towards that? you've got four goals. So then break them down. Why do I want to do it? What needs to happen? When am I going to schedule it in? If it doesn't happen, what? Like, what, what are you going to do? If I don't get a toned ass, well, like, okay, well, I've got to actually make it happen. Why do I want that? Why do I want a nice bum? Because I want to look good in a bikini. I want to walk on the beach. I want to have someone slap it and go, yes, that looks awesome. <laughs> like, I don't know, have some fun with it, right? Like, why do, you want to, why do you want to do the goal that you actually are setting in for yourself? But book it in. You've got to have some kind of massive action to be able to get there. And then ask yourself one more question on every single one of those top four one-year goals. Who do you need to become? 
So you might have new words of who you need to become on every single one of those goals. Because when you look at those goals, what kind of person do you need to be to actually achieve it? Because I knew that if I wanted to have a toned ass, I had to be way more energetic than I was. I had to be at that gym every day. So then you just create like two or three little action steps for every one of those top four one-year goals. So then when you're creating your vision board and you've got your top four one-year goals and I wanted to have a toned ass, then I might have pictures of me, um, you know, words of fitness and health. And I've got a beautiful picture of this amazing ass on my vision board that I can look at every day and go, I am telling myself that I'm going to the gym every freaking day at nine o'clock. I'm going to squat until my ass looks like that. <laughs> and I took a photo not long ago and it's close. It's not too, <laughs> it's not too far away. So you'll always find a solution to work towards your goal is my biggest tip. Um, but you know, one thing that I used to just sit around and just watch TV, but now I can just, go and work towards my little goals instead and just do something every day um, because you just can't do epic stuff with epic dreams and goals and just not do anything about it. So yeah, that's, that's my biggest thing. Um, and what else are we going to talk about? So now I'm, I'm, is that, has anyone got any questions? I'm just Lee, going. that's been awesome. Oh my gosh. So much, um, value in there on how to properly set goals and you're right if we've got too many then we just lose focus we get overwhelmed we get burnout trying to chase them all and i think you're right just keep keeping it really simple picking your top four and then breaking it down backwards you know what that actually looks like um and what is that first step i think so so many people just don't um don't know what that first step is or they, um, they try and do 50 steps at once and <laughs> sometimes yeah. you just have to pull it back. And do you know what my biggest tip around that is? If you don't know how to reach your goal, go and find someone to help you to, to do that. Because in this community, you've got people with finance experience, personal training experience, you've got coaches, mentors, people who have worked for Tony Robbins for like 30 years that can help you break through so much shit that's going on in your mind. But what happens is people don't ask. They just don't ask questions. I've got people who do it in my team. I'm like, well, you know, you're not getting anywhere because you're not even asking any questions on how to work through the problems and the solutions, right? So there'll always be someone and you will come across challenges. It's, just it's how it works if you don't have a challenge you're not going to grow from it and you don't have the learnings to be able to teach someone else so that kind of forms part of like that whole story up there um i used to really i was really really challenged in the beginning same with joel around videos and just sharing my story i actually hated video and when I first started this business, Lorian used to get me onto team trainings like this and he'd call me up and I'd actually turn my video off and close my laptop <laughs> for about six months. I, I refused to do videos. And it wasn't until I really dug some, um, didn't, done some digging down into why was I actually doing that? Like, where was the thought process that came up? And it actually stemmed back to my childhood of, somewhere between like the age of zero and eight. I don't know even when it was, but my dad used to try and force me to get on video when I was younger because he used to be in TV and he used to like, you know, he was always showing people that they were stars and I didn't want to be like that. I would push away from it. But when I started this business, like I see so many people, one of the things with confidence is to actually share your story and to go out and inspire others. And I kind of thought, okay, well, what do I need to go to do that? And I did live video training. I did little podcasts. I practiced sharing my story to get up on stage. I actually read a TED talk book, believe it or not. I've never read, I've never even watched a TED talk before. And here I am like practicing speeches as if I was doing a TED talk. Like you've just got to take that one step at a time. 
And the whole thing around that story was we went to um, freestyle retreat. Adam Westwick does freestyle retreats once a year. And we got there and one of our team building events there was that they gave us a blank canvas and they said, we want you to share your story and your journey so far with paint. <laughs> and my first initial reaction, like when you think about some of the things that you do in this business, you kind of go, I do not know even how to do that. <laughs> I don't even know how to paint. <laughs> I've never painted before in my whole entire life. How am I going to share my story? I can't even share it talking to somebody, let alone like actually put it in a picture. But there was just something where I just took a step back and just took a big deep breath and thought, all right, let's just, let's just see what happens. Like, just give it a go. Like, what, what's the worst thing that can happen? And I was kind of looking around at what everyone else was doing. And I just put my blinkers on and just went, no, I'm just going to create whatever comes out. And it's so funny because I've never painted before in my whole entire life. And I don't, I don't even know. Can you see it properly out there? You can see it. Like, I'm so proud of this picture. And what it represents is that... When I was younger, some of the things that I absolutely love to do, and I always go back to think about this, when I'm, whenever I'm stuck, whenever I'm challenged, go back and think about what's the one thing you're like, um, the memory that's just so far away that was just so much fun. And for me, it was a moment where I sat on this little red bike at my Nana's house going so fast down her hill, down her back concrete with my legs in the air. And, you know, just that feeling of the wind in your hair, just like, yes, <laughs> that's me. That's how I create the excitement. So I love zip lines. I love going fast. I love roller coasters and I love swings. So that was my swing. So when I started painting that, I'm thinking about my story, thinking, you know, I, I love speed and I love momentum and that's what this business can get you that when you pick up that speed and that momentum you've really got to kick your legs like when you're on a swing you you've got to kick and you've got to go but then there's times when you're just going to like hold on and you're just going to cruise back but then you have to kick it back into gear again right you have to go the tree represents all of the community that are around us. So everybody that's in Juice Plus, everyone that's in my family, my friends network, that's that strength and that, that flow out of the leaves. And when you can kick your legs hard enough and gain some momentum in this business, you can reach for the stars and the moon. <laughs> that's what that whole part there was. However, there's going to be times when you're going to come a cropper off that swing. And those are not flowers on the bottom. That is fire. <laughs> there ain't no daisies down there. <laughs> that is burning hot coals. But see, luckily I've been to UPW and I know how to walk on fire now. I've done it twice. So you can walk on that fire. You can go and pick up that Wonder Woman sword and that shield over there. Arm yourself back into the challenge. And just walk straight back across that fire and get back on that swing again. Just give it another go. <laughs> so <laughs> that's my story, um, basically, about the business in a painting. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And it looks very artistic. You should be very proud, honey. What a great representation. I love it. Um, awesome. All right. Well, just to finish up then, um, if you could put anything on a billboard for the world to see, what would you put on the billboard? I would put on there great big words, make yourself epic. Make yourself epic. <laughs> make yourself epic. Like, and just what is it? What is it that you need to do to go and do that one step at a time? Yeah, I love that. I love that. Yeah, Does anyone have any questions you. before we let Lee go? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was there any questions in there? That was awesome, honey. I think, um, yeah, you've definitely shed some light. Um, and the correlation between not just writing your goals down, but grabbing them in picture form and, and whacking them, you know, on a vision board. And I love the idea. I, I haven't done mine where I've broken it down. Well, I have done it before into 90 day um, vision boards, but to put it into a one year vision board 
And then something that I love to do is when I start achieving the things off the vision board is whack it in a jar. So on New Year's Eve, you can pull out all these amazing things that you've achieved over the course of the year, which is pretty cool. Oh, I did that on this one. So I'll just show you, I'll flash up really quickly. This was my kids one. So you can do them with your kids as well. So when we decided to go to Japan, Japan and Disneyland were one of our top four one year goals. So then we broke it down into the vision board of all of the things that we could do and have fun there while we were just on that one year goal. So that was like a one year goal. And then what you just said, Christine, that was, this was one of my um, vision boards from last year. And when I finished it for the whole year, I went and put all of the little things down that we actually did achieve on there as well. But my new one, I put stickers on and I've got little stars and I've, I star things as soon as I've ticked them off, which is really yeah. cool. And they just, they get better and bigger and more exciting every single time. Yeah, I love that. Yes. Um, the sentence that someone said. Um, the challenges that one you're all, oh, I think it's a Tony Robbins thing actually um what I know is that you're always going to have challenges these problems are just the sign of life they are not going to go away but what I know is problems create change and with the right skills and mentors change sees the solution is that it I think it's important too and you mentioned this before is that you, you can't do this business alone like you really do have to ask for help or resources or reach out to someone that's been there or ask someone else to jump on a call or um, maybe you're, you're stuck and you think this person can help me. I think they've been through something similar. And you just reach out and ask and people are more than happy to, um, you know, to answer, help answer your question or support you along the way, you know, like um, Lee's got nothing to do with our business. And I just said, Hey, would you mind jumping on a call? And she's like, yeah, for sure. You know, I haven't had one person and I'm sure Joel's the same knock us back and say, no, I'm, we're not doing a call for you. Like no one's ever said no. Like people are always willing to offer support and help in whatever you need. So if you sometimes feel like you're alone, especially people who go, um, you know, oh, you guys are so lucky you live on the Gold Coast. You know, everything's happening on the Gold Coast, you know. But if you dig deep, you can recreate what's been created on the Gold Coast. That just started with one woman. That was just yeah. one woman with a massive big vision and a fierce heart that started all that. And you're one person that can do the same thing wherever you are in Australia or on this planet. You can recreate the culture, the community. It starts with one of you and then it starts with one crazy follower and then a couple of followers after that and then all of a sudden it builds and gets bigger and bigger and um you know people people drop off people come in for a minute or two and then they leave and it, it doesn't matter like you just keep going you just keep creating that culture so so important to lean in on on other people so thank you so much um Lee, like you're amazing. You really are. And I love watching your journey and seeing you grow and the impact that you're making. It's, it's amazing. It's really, really yeah, incredible. Can I, so can I give one more tip? Is go that for it. If you, if you feel that like sometimes I found that when I was talking to Laurie and it was like my nagging husband, like it's <laughs> tough and you'd go and I'd get advice and it just wasn't what I wanted to hear. It was exactly what I needed to hear but it wasn't what I needed to hear. And it wasn't until I started linking in sometimes with sideline buddies and getting onto other people's trainings and listening to, to other people that weren't Lorian who I spoke to every single day, that they say it, sometimes somebody just says something in a slightly different way. That you, that's when you'll go, ah, oh, now I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it took me like two years before I'm like, oh, light bulb moment. <laughs> <laughs> so always, always reach out and ask and yeah, just follow along. Yeah, absolutely. You're awesome, Chick. Thank you so much. Really, really appreciate it. Um, that's it, guys.